As you prepare for your hair transplant, you wonder which season is the best for you, don't you? The changing seasons on our planet can be compared to the cycle of healing and growth after hair transplant. While selecting a season for your hair transplant, you must realize, which many people do not, that what people staying in temperate climates call summertime is very different from the summer of the tropics or the subtropics, the zones which are called the torrid zone. The same is with winter. And summers and winters have different severity depending upon which place on the globe you are living. So in this video, I talk about when is the right time for your hair transplant? Do seasons affect hair growth? Is there a particular time of the year or a particular season when hair grows the best? Does sweating cause problems after a hair transplant? If these are the questions you are researching today, please hang on. Darling birds, darling birds, I'm gonna darling birds clinic. Darling birds is where I'm headed. For mama told me son, there are no second chances. Love and war and hair transplant. Darling birds. So different zones on the planet have different weather and different seasons. In India similarly, like in most subtropical countries, life nurturing spring is followed by the cruel wounding summer that dries out everything in its wake, which in turn is followed by the incessant monsoon rain, the rain that heals. And then comes autumn or the fall and soon does winter follow. Summertime may be the happiest time in temperate zones, but elsewhere on earth, it can be really punishing. The hair root is planted directly into the body. It is only the non-living part that is the hair shaft which is visible above the skin. So since the living part, the root, the follicle is planted or buried 4 millimeters deep into the skin, it assumes body temperature that is 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And since body temperature is regulated by the body, it remains the same come winter, come summer, come spring, come fall, the root is not affected by external environment. So why do people create so much of fuss? Because there is a lot of misinformation and misconception that increased sweating affects hair growth by preventing healing. As long as proper daily hygiene is maintained as instructed by the clinic, with morning evening cleaning with the medicated solutions provided, there is no problem whatsoever. Since the recipient area, the donor area, they both become watertight as early as 36 hours after the procedure. And since it's your own sweat, where is the issue then? Sweat is mostly water and sodium chloride. Besides very small portions of innocuous chemicals originating from the interstitial fluid and the eccrine sweat gland itself. So other than personal discomfort, sweating has no role to play in healing or causing poor hair growth. In subtropical countries like India, the sun is killing killing without mercy for almost three months in a year. That is May, June and parts of July. But hair transplant procedures in most clinics like mine are still booked each day during the Indian summer as well. Even on the days when the temperature crosses 45, like today. Academically speaking, both winter and summer have their pros and cons. But since we can modify our immediate environment with the comfort of modern living, there is no good or bad season. No good or bad season for a hair transplant. The only concern is discomfort and not being able to go outdoors bareheaded. During the peak sunny hours between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. to minimize exposure to the sun. So it all boils down to when you can take time off from work and be completely relaxed on the day of the procedure and the week to follow. Usually summer vacations are longer than winter vacations. It is much easier to get time off work during the summers since it is not a festival season and not many people, your colleagues at your workplace would apply for leave during this time. Getting a hair transplant done during summer also means that you will have a head full of hair by Diwali or Christmas or New Year's. On the other hand, having a closely cropped head during the summers goes unnoticed since this is the preferred hairstyle during summers. So in most cases, after two weeks, no one will be able to make out your hair transplant even when you go bareheaded. And last but not the least, flights to India are usually cheaper during summertime. 
As a corollary, in cold countries where summers are celebrated, getting a hair transplant during the winters has a huge fan following. Because if you get the procedure done in winters, the result will follow in the summer and you can appear without a hat with renewed confidence and happiness. Wearing a hat or a bandana to work during the winters, on the other hand, does not raise eyebrows. Unless, of course, you are in a front office job. So both the seasons have their own pros and cons for a hair transplant procedure. The best season is when you are relaxed, mentally prepared, away from day-to-day -day life stressors, and the time when you can take good care of yourself for the seven days following the procedure. Personally, I have not experienced any difference in the hair transplant result, whether it is done during the summer or the winter, or the spring or the fall. It's all about personal comfort and the time when you can be relaxed and without worry. For results depend upon the skill of the surgeon you have chosen and the aftercare that follows. A good season starts with good beginnings. Have a nice day and if you have any questions from me, any thought that comes to your mind, let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer. God bless you and have a nice day.